Listen, I don't know about you, but I am just sick and tired of yeast being happy and healthy. That's so 2020. Okay, here's the deal. This mead, these yeasts, they've been happy for too long. We have fed them too well. We have given them too much. It's time to really just show them who's boss. It's time to punish these yeasts for existing. I mean, are you serious? Come on, do you really need help? <sniffs> We're gonna mix together a mead. We're gonna just throw them in there. We're gonna see what happens. And I'm gonna make sure that they are miserable. Here's my goal. We are gonna put five pounds of honey into this mead. This is a lava and QA23 yeast, by the way. We are going to throw the yeast right in and we are gonna ferment at the top of their temperature range because put them to the test. Let's go ahead and mix it up. We're at 1.130 for our starting gravity. I'm just gonna toss these boys in. Good luck, my friends. Hope you enjoy the hot tub. Put this on. Right, shake it up a little bit, actually. And my research says that they like between, I think, 68 and 90 degrees Fahrenheit. So we should probably push them to 91 for the duration of their fermentation. Because, right, these guys don't deserve to be happy. We got our heater heating up. 84 degrees currently. Still warming up, and it's already doing something. So we're pushing this yeast up to about 90.1, about 90 degrees Fahrenheit. Still chilling. Let's see what happens. So this guy is stuck at about 1055-ish. We've been fermenting at about 87 consistently for the past two and a half weeks, and it's stuck. Well, I say stuck, it's going real slow. We'll see if it actually finishes at this temperature. All right, we are 26 days into fermentation and this guy is chilling at about, um, about 1054, 1 1.054. Uh, I think it's halted. Now, my next step, it's currently setting at 90 degrees. Uh, I wanna give it a little hope, but we'll see. I'm gonna bump it down to about uh, 84 to ferment. So it's been, uh, about 45 days since we started this thing. And these yeast, I don't think they're gonna do anything anymore. I think they're at their point of death. They've been sitting for a while. It's actually at 1.058, um, a little bit even higher than why, what I anticipated. And I think that of course doing a gravity reading while it was hot could have messed that up. Clearly these yeast had a hard time chewing through everything. That's already a high gravity. It, they were also put their, to their limits but they should be able to handle it, right? Well, let's go ahead and taste test it and see if there's anything funky going on. All right, we have it here. Not really clear, um, I'm sure. I'll probably rack it off and we'll see what happens from there, but that is so sweet. Oh my gosh, that is basically honey water. <laughs> it's got alcohol there, but the alcohol is hidden big time by the amount of sweetness there is. Yeah, woo. Um, so that QA23 should have been able to go to 16%. This thing is setting at like a 9.2-ish percent. So they are way underneath their cap. Yeah, that is so sweet. Oh, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna rack this into a new container. Uh, I don't think anything's gonna happen. The yeast are dead. Clearly they couldn't handle it, um, but that's fine. We're gonna go and rack it over real fast and then we'll talk. All right, we're gonna take and set this right back up on, I'm gonna call it the uh, Tower of Shame. We're gonna see if it clears any. Come back in a little bit and do a taste test, but it's not looking good. All right, we're here for the taste test. I've got my friend Jake. We're here to taste this stupid mead. Are you ready for this? This is like, these bunch of idiots, like, what are they doing? Okay, go on, go on and open that thing up. Like, like, let's get it going. So just oh, use I a spoon. This. Yeah, I got the spoon. So let me tell you a little about this, about these uh, these yeasts, okay? First of all, they started at 11.30. Well, I should say, this is the Lavin QA23, which by the way, you love that yeast, your favorite yeast that's ever existed. My favorite yeast. I mean, they're amazing. They started at 11.30. They fermented at 89 degrees Fahrenheit. 
for the entirety of their fermentation. So they started there and ended there. They stopped at 1050. I don't know why, it seems silly. And I didn't give them nutrients because they don't need them, right? That's, that's stupid. Yeast exactly. don't need nutrients. I don't know who keeps saying that, but that is outrageous. So, dude, let's taste test this thing. Let's see, let's see what happened with them. See if they did anything good. Here we go. <laughs> yeah. All right. What, what you got? What you got? Um. Well. It's uh, a little hot. A little, a little hot. <laughs> they only got through 80 points, though. So it's only like 10.5%. But still, it's a little hot. Yeah. What do you think about the sweetness of it? Sweeter than I would, sweeter than I would do. And it's 10.50, man. That's not, that's not where you normally make your meads. You don't stop at 10.50. <laughs> no. <laughs> no um... There's an interesting amount of, uh, there's something here. It's like a, how, how, how old is this? I'm curious. Three months old to the day. Okay. Do you get any fusils or anything odd before I, before I, before I start talking? I mean, it's like, there's, um, there's just a, a lot, there's, there's a lot of sweetness, right? So it's kind of like, I'm trying to taste around it. Yeah. And, um. There's just a little bit of like a rocket fuel note to it. Like when I when I made my first couple of meads, it had this distinct aroma mm -hmm. and flavor, and it's here. Yeah. Um, it tastes like my first couple of meads. My first couple of meads, I, never, I didn't use any nutrients. Um, it's a similar experience, man. It's uh, it's. You know what's what's interesting about the QA23 on um, a lot of its website? They talk about how it is a low nutrient needing yeast. So. The, I didn't. I had not considered that when I started this, but theoretically, they should have done a little better than, let's say, a D47 or a EC1118 than most yeast, with them being low nutrient needing. I thought that was interesting. Taking me aback is the amount of sweetness for one. Of course, 1050 is pretty hot. I mean, that's or not hot, but it's pretty sweet. And that's it is very very sweet for one. But there is, like you said, that slight burn, and there's that. Um, it, it tastes super young. Like to me, like I taste like it's three weeks out. Like I just pulled it out of primary. That's why I asked how old it was. I was going to say like it's, it's, it tastes like it's got a fermentation funk, like super fresh, like uh, young, super yeah. young. Like it's just right out of primary. And well, it's I not. Think, it's three months old. No. And I think that I'm, I'm curious to see if it gets any better with time. But something noted here is like, I mean... These yeast are doing something special when you put them under some some uh, circumstances. So, and this thing might take 16, 18 months to age before it's like palpable. But even now, personally, the sweetness is too too much. Yeah, I would agree. You know, there's like a when I first got into mead making and I've made my first couple of meads, they all have this like it's like a uh, appley sort of an apple cider sort of a flavor to them. Uh -huh. And that's what I have always perceived as like what yeast stress tastes like because that's before uh -huh. I really understood how to use nutrients. And we ran into a lot of these at Mead Stampede. Not a lot, but a, a handful uh -huh. of them. And I tasted them and I went, you know, that tastes like my first couple of meads. Yeah. And it's here. Well, what was your note? I know you said something about QA23 in general. You said that every time you've used it, you've gotten the specific note coming out of it yeah it's normally a very like a bready a bready mm -hmm. biscuity mm, i don't want to say malty because that's kind of goes into the beer terminology but are you getting that here at all you know normally i could i can smell qa 23 from a mile away because it's yeah. like it's a very distinct profile and it's not here I, I'm thinking it's because of the sweetness. It is so sweet. It's it's hard for me to like navigate around it to try to find other things to talk about other than the sweetness because it's very, like very very sweet. Yeah. No, I, I agree. I think that that is probably the biggest thing here. I I would I thought the yeast could handle it. You know what I mean? Like this is uh, this is their wheelhouse, right? You just throw them in and they do their thing. It's supposed to be what they do. 
yeah, yeah. they just they just work so I'm a, I'm shocked what can I say I'm shocked that these East didn't do what they were supposed to so who knows maybe maybe I did something wrong I don't know if I did something wrong who knows couldn't be Couldn't, stupid absolutely East. not that's unbelievable they're a bunch of idiots that's for sure just floating <laughs> around in here I still see them in there just just hanging out having a good time well Jake thank you for um, for coming on here I want to give a plug for Jake for sure every single bit of music aside from what you're about to hear in just one moment has come from Jake um, all of the amazing metal music and so I'll put a link down below for uh, any of his music if you want to check him out um, I would love to to send people your way because uh, you got some great stuff and uh, it's very fitting for for this moment right here awesome thank you though so, thanks Jake It's time to talk about yeast health. Through all of this time, we have talked, we have punished, we have elbowed and jabbed and RKO'd every single yeast we can possibly do, all for the sake of science. Yeast matter. The health of yeast matters. And if you are not prioritizing that in your brew, you will experience the issues with it. Here's my challenge. Every single yeast, mead, we make in general. Look up that yeast packet. Look up, is it a Lauvin D47? What kind of temperature range does it need to be in? Does it need lots of nutrients? Does it need just a little bit of nutrient source? What is the general vibe of that yeast? What you'll find is if you know this, you will probably give that yeast what they need. But if you don't give that yeast what they need, you will be sorely disappointed by their performance like I was. Take care of your yeast like they're your favorite pet. Make sure you are making mead that has some process behind it, has some method to your madness, and I will see you next time. Cheers.